I woke up today with the stupidest idea, that being that I'm going to be talking about the best thing, or my favorite thing, about every character in Smash Ultimate. Now, this could be memes about the character, this could be their best moves, this could be just things that I love about playing the character, or love about seeing. It could kind of be all over the place, just one thing about every character, though. With that in mind, of course, this is just my own personal subjective opinion. This is this is not objective at all. You Don't go onto your favorite Discord and say, you know, Joe's an idiot, this move is definitely way better. <laughs> this is just my own my own opinion from playing. So with that in mind, let's get going. The thing about Mario I love is the fact that his frame data is just so good. Now he has amazing combos which are cool, his throw combos are fun, but just being able to jump towards your opponent in a lot of cases, chuck out a back air, chuck out another back air, chuck out a neutral air, you're really close, go for a down tilt or a forward tilt. Just being able to throw a bajillion attacks and feeling like you're somewhat safe doing all of them, it's just kind of fun. Donkey Kong, whenever I play him, he just feels awful, if I'm gonna be honest, but I always win as Donkey Kong. I, I don't know how to put this any other way. He's a character that you just get whomped, but then you get yourself a zero to death combo. And it's not like they're true, they're never true, but they just happen. And the fact that those can come out, and the fact that he's just fun every single time you pull him out, that for myself is my favorite part about him. I feel like with Link, you could talk about his bombs, you could talk about his setups, you could talk about all that. Um, but I'm gonna go with the lame answer and say his Nair. The best thing about Link is obviously his Nair. It's just such a good move. It lasts for so long. It can kill, it can edge guard, it can ledge trap, it can do everything. It, yeah, it's kind of lame, but yeah. The sh movement that Samus can do with the charge shot, I think is so cool. Now, do most Samuses do this? No, most Samuses do not. Most Samuses use side B, use down B, and then maybe go for a charge shot and play extremely lame. You jump, they're going full forward air. It's not fun at all. However, if you see a Samus or Dark Samus going for that sh movement, moving around, making the stuff look nice, especially on platforms with charge shot, that can be pretty cool. It doesn't happen very often, but it can be cool. I was trying to think about things that I think are the best or my favorite about Yoshi, and I was realizing that not, <laughs> not way too much was coming to mind. I guess the one thing is that he feels very simple to play. It feels like when you pick him up, you just don't have to think very much, and you still get decent results. And as well, his combos are pretty fun to play with. That's, that's all I really have to say about him, though. Honestly, I love playing Kirby because the disrespect that you get from playing Kirby. You land one down tilt, get that trip combo, get a forward throw into a forward air, which isn't true anymore for some reason because they nerfed that out of the last game. And if you win as Kirby, you, you just won the mental game. I have taken people to Green Green's money matches as Kirby with some items on, and I've made at least $12. Kirby, I, 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 give him, I give him a round of applause for that. Fox's movement and just feeling like you're playing well is what I think is the best thing about Fox, because he's one of those characters that if you are moving perfectly, your opponent can't hit you. And as well, you have the frame data and just the ability to go in that you can apply pressure that no other character can. And when you watch a play like Light, doing well and playing perfectly, it's just so stinking cool because all that movement, the fast falling, everything, it doesn't oftentimes happen, but what it does, that's 100% the best thing about Fox. The best thing about Pikachu is that he's the best at like everything. Um, if you look at matchup charts, Pikachu is just good in like almost every single matchup and he only has like two maybe bad matchups, maybe, and then like three even matchups and then he just wins everything else. So just the best thing about Pikachu is that he's just good at everything, good combos, good projectile, good decent enough range, good speed, is small, he just kind of got everything. Not way too much you can say about him because he's just obviously good. <laughs> okay, so you could say the best thing about Luigi is going to be his down throw combos, and I won't argue with you. But my favorite thing about Luigi is going to be the disrespect that he can pull out. The fact that his down taunt can kill at like 10%, and it never hits, and it never will hit, but it does sometimes. Spicy. The fact that you can get just uppies out of shield and just piss everybody off and it just looks hilarious every single time. I don't know, this character is just kind of a meme. He's super, super obnoxious in this game. But it's just funny. <laughs> the best thing about playing Ness for me is that you don't have to play the game. And at least until you're in a higher level, at middle and low levels, you just you just do Ness. You just forward air when you want to approach a little bit. You nair out a shield. Um, you go for side B when their opponent's kind of far away. And you down smash a ledge. And that's it. And no thought process required. That's it. Sure, he can do awesome things. But the best thing is, you know, you don't really want to try way too much right now. You pull him out, you get pretty good results, and that's just kind of nice. That's just how it is. Captain Falcon's hype is one bajillion percent the best part about this character. Now, unfortunately, he's a lot less hype than in the last game because he just doesn't have that much stuff that actually works consistently anymore, and his movement looks kind of horrible, and overall, he's just kind of disappointing. 
But when he finally gets something, when he finally gets a Falcon Punch, or finally gets a knee, or finally gets a setup, or finally gets a 0 to 80 that he's been practicing in the training mode for like four months, it looks so nice. It looks so cool. I wish it could happen more often. Unfortunately, it doesn't. But Falcon, he's definitely got that going for him. I think the best thing about Jigglypuff is definitely the new buffs that she got, actually, where you can get stuff like Downer into Rest, and where as well, you can get stuff like Side into Rest. Just all of her Rest setups. I think they're really cool. They're really fun to watch. And while the rest of Jigglypuff is kind of not the most interesting, it's not bad, it's just not super interesting, Rest is just always a really awesome mechanic, and I just love seeing it. Getting 0 to 80 combos as Peach consistently, and just being able to mash on your opponent's shield. It's just the best. It's just the best feeling. When you can eventually get it down, when you have all your tech skill, when you can do all the float cancels, and you're just there in like four times in a row on your opponent's shield and there's nothing they can do. It just feels so good. Um, yeah. In tournament, Bowser's my character with my best results. Now, how much hours have I put into Bowser? Maybe like six, and I've only pulled him out in tournament ever. But he's just so dang easy at like a middle level. Because if your opponent messes up at all, you just do so much damage and you live for so long. And if your opponent ever hits your shield, up be out of shield. If your opponent ever just starts shielding a lot, side B him. If you ever want a random kill, just start chucking out smash attacks and your opponent's probably dumb enough to eventually get hit by one. He's just kind of a meme in the fact that he just can make you win against players that are as good as you or worse than you without even really thinking. And, you know, while he definitely gets kind of destroyed at the top level by a lot of people, for the average player... He's, he's kind of like Ness, he'll do you a good job. All of Ice Climber's just amazing combos are what I love about this character. Now, can I pull them off? Um, no, no Chief, I, I cannot pull those off. I have not put any time into that. But when you look at an Ice Climber's main, and they're getting their 0 to 40s, their 0 to 60s, and even their 0 to deaths, it's just really cool. Now, are they consistent? Not really, and if they ever do become super consistent, they are going to be patched out of the game. But they're just really cool, they're really interesting, and spe especially when you compare it to like chain grabbing or wobbling in previous games, it's pretty cool for this character. Sheik's neutral, and, and I will die for this, is one of the best in the entire game, easily. It is so safe. It is so brain deadly safe, because just everything's so fast, she's so good in the air, so good on the ground, everything is just decently sized as far as hitboxes go. It's all really, really great, and I think people forget that. That's what makes her actually a pretty decent character. Sure, he, she lost a lot of her more consistent kill confirmed, and sure, she can't kill as consistently as before, or I guess as early as before. She can still kill kind of consistently. But just how good she's in neutral, at least before, like, your opponent's 80% is amazing. Uh, sure, when she trades, she always loses. But as long as you aren't getting trades, and as long as you're just playing neutral perfectly, she can do a lot of work. <laughs> this is so dumb. But for me, Zelda just being able to tilt people is just a power that I see online and offline. Just... Having Zelda do the same stupid thing where she charges her down B, your opponent jumps at you, you release it and get hit by it, and then just rinse repeat. Your opponent finally gets on the Zelda player, well she's going to be using that neutral B, she's going to be using that up B, she's just going to be using her defensive player. And just seeing the opponent slowly but surely getting more and more and more tilted as they don't know what to do, especially online and lag, oh, oh, that's the perfect thing is Zelda. Dr. Mario is a Chad character, and I, I don't know if I can say anything else about him. His down air? What can you even say about that? His back throw yeet? What can you even say about that? His down throw down B? Sure, he is pretty much an awful character, but he is my awful character, and I love playing him. I feel like for myself and Pichu, it's, it's, it's a really weird situation because I mained him for a long while, and then he got nerfed, and he just felt not that fun anymore. And it's not that he's that bad, there's still a lot of top players playing him and doing well, he's just not quite as fun. Just dealing so much damage to yourself, and just feeling like whenever you win, you're losing, and feeling like you're just taking so much damage for winning the game, and dying so early because of it, it's just not the funnest. But what is fun, is just all of his kill moves. And I will die with this. Unfortunately his forward tilt is gone, but his forward smash, his down smash, his back air, his down air, all of them are just so oomph. Every time you hit them. Sure, you'll be taking a lot of damage for going for him, but they just feel so nice. And for such a small character, and for a character that you normally wouldn't think would have stuff like that, it's just fun. Honestly, when I play Falco, most of the time I'm just using up tilt. And when you look at most Falcos, a lot of the time, they just use an up tilt. This move is just Falco the character. I know a lot of other characters that talk about generalizations. But up tilt just leads to so much, it leads to combos, it leads to good damage, it's safe enough, and it can just set your opponent above you for juggles, off stage, for whatever you want. It's just such an amazing move, it fits so well with Falco, I wish he had some other stuff to kind of complement it a little bit better, but it works great, and it's definitely one of the best moves in the game.
Lucina is good because you just mash the A button, and if your opponent isn't good at the game and don't know how to whip punish, you win the game. And that's just kind of how it is with this character. And it's kind of lame to play against, and it's, it definitely requires a lot of time and practice to win against. But that's just kind of how it is, and I'm going to say she's definitely one of the best characters in the entire game at low level. Probably the best, because just you just press buttons and you win. <laughs> of course, as you go up in skill level, that doesn't happen anymore. Um, she becomes quite a bit worse, and even people are sometimes now putting her at like, the very bottom of top tier, even at the top of high tier. So obviously she is falling off a bit, but yeah. Moving on to Marth, I love Marth. I think Marth is so cool. I think he's probably the coolest character in the entire game when his stuff works. He's a character that has to connect his bad hitboxes into his good hitboxes, and everybody gets Marth wrong. Everybody doesn't understand Marth. You don't always have to get tippers, and I think nobody gets this. Getting stuff like, you know, a weak forward air into like a forward smash, that can be kind of cool. Getting stuff like a weak up air into like an up tilt, and then continue from there. You can mix a lot of your weak moves into your strong moves, and it just works well. And as well, of course, his tippers is just so cool. His kill moves are a lot different than Lucina's. You should go for different stuff. A lot of times your forward is a little bit better. Your forward tilt is godlike. Yeah, they're just different. That's my spiel. I think... Marth is just awesome, his tippers are the coolest thing in the game. I just wish he was a little better, but yeah, th that's how it is. When you play Young Link, you feel like a god, and it's as simple as that. Y I don't know how to explain this. You just press your buttons, and they just seem to work together. Now, will you win a lot as Young Link? No, no you won't win a lot. But you will feel good, you'll feel like a great player, and really, it can you get any better than that? Nah. Throwing out a crap ton of just mediocre moves at best, and beating your opponent, and just just doing that alone is what makes Ganon feel so good. Now, most of the time you are going to be losing as Ganon, so that makes him feel not the best, but just spamming there, spamming dash attack, going for the stupidest quote-unquote hard read forward smashes that aren't a read at all, you're just chucking these things out there hoping for a kill. It feels good. It, it just feels good. Oh, Mewtwo makes me so sad. I love Mewtwo in Smash 4. Easily one of my favorite characters. And in this game, he just has the tail hitbox, and he just has an awful air dodge now, which used to be one of the best in the game, and he just feels so much worse. With that in mind, I feel like the thing about Mewtwo is that he feels just fun to play still. He has great movement, he has great damage, he has B reverses, he has down B jank shenanigans, he's just a really fun character to play. I wish he was a little bit better, but as it is, it's enjoyable to go for him, just not really in competitive games. Exploding your opponent is the best thing about Roy. Just being able to do stuff like, you know, jab into back air, the jair. Everybody likes the jair. Being able to do stuff like side B at ledge and kill your opponent at like 50 if they're Pichu. Who, who doesn't like that? Being able to get Nair 1 into F smash and kill at like 60 at mid stage. Magnifique. He's just a character that just your opponent dies. And that's just fun. That's just fun. It feels so good. Um, Krom on the same end has a lot of very similar stuff, but I guess the benefit to him compared to Roy is that you don't really have to worry quite as much, and it just feels like you're playing a little bit more safe if you're into that. They're very similar though. Playing as Mr. Game & Watch feels like you aren't even playing the game. It feels like you're playing a meme, and he just is somehow working now, he somehow climbed up the meta. I hate playing against Game & Watch, but I do pretty well against them, I'm gonna, I'm gonna toot my own horn right here, as Game & Watch will toot his up air. <laughs> now, the thing about Game & Watch that's obviously the best thing is going to be his up B out of shield, or just his up B. This thing's so dumb. It's frame 3, it's invincible, it has a gigantic hitbox, it combos, it makes your opponent essentially can't ever approach without being 100% safe all the time. They can't apply really any shield pressure at all, and of course when you do this, there's really no risk because you can just down her back to stage and do it again. It's really dumb. It's, it's just so dumb. But that's the best thing about him, so there you go. Meta Knight just doesn't really feel like he works that often in this game, which is unfortunate because I've always actually wanted to play Meta Knight and give him a chance to main him, but he just feels like he doesn't quite have enough range and doesn't quite have enough speed and just doesn't quite work. His kit just doesn't feel like it works 100% together. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, dash attack just doesn't work as well as the last game. His down throw combos into up air and up B don't work quite as well. He just feels like not quite a fully prepared character. With that in mind, some of his combos can be so spicy still. Um, being able to, mainly just killing off the side, being able to do stuff like, you know, up air, up air, up air, neutral B, killing off the side, being able to do stuff like Nair, into Nair, into like a side B, and you drag your opponent off the stage and kill them, and just being able to still up air string people off the top of the stage. Just getting kills like that is so spicy. Um, it doesn't happen that often in this game, unfortunately. It isn't that consistent, and it's really hard to set up, but when it happens, it looks really cool, and it makes for great Twitter clips. Oh, okay, it's it's very hard to say the best thing about Pit and Dark Pit because they're just disappointing. I had so much hope for this character when this game came out, and it's not that they're bad, it's just that they don't they don't do anything. They're just there. 
and I actually still enjoy playing them, and I guess that's the thing about them. They just feel like when you're playing this character, you aren't cheesing your opponent. You're just playing a nice fair game, and if you win, you deserve that win, because you have nothing really cheese. But that's also what makes them feel kind of awful to play. Yeah, I, I wish there was something more for this character, but I guess just feeling fair and feeling honest when you want to, that's a thing they can give you that no one else can. Zero Suit's probably best thing is the fact that if you want to, you can play 100% safe, never go in, use your mobility, and just spam stuff like neutral air, spam a lot of your aerials, spam a lot of tilts, and just be completely safe and never allow your opponent to do anything, be extremely lame. Honestly, that's probably the quote-unquote perfect way to play Zero Suit in a lot of cases. Um, I hate I hate that way to play her, but that's what she can do. Now, my favorite thing about her, on the other hand, is the fact that while she has all this pretty boring stuff, let's be honest, um, she also can be one of the hypest characters in the whole game. She just has so many moves that can lead to early kills, like her downer, like her down B, like her side B in some weird situations, she can edge guard super far, she can ledge up pretty well, and she just has a ton of really cool combos. Now, for most players, I feel like they play the more cool combo-oriented Zero Suit, you can play kinda lame, it depends on what you want to do. But there's so much potential with combos and just cool stuff that this character can do. That's my favorite thing about her. Oria's Waft is just the best thing about the character. Um, his combos are godlike. I won't be wrong right there. His airspeed is really fun. He's just a fun character along with that. And he just has automatic disrespect because you're playing Wario. But Waft, I mean, you can put that in any character and it would be great. Of course, you know, hopefully they're a combo character. But either way, it's just kind of godlike. I think the best thing about playing Snake is the fact that you just feel so smart and so cool playing him. He has a lot of other benefits, um, he's a very good character, he has a great projectile game, all of that, but you just play Snake, and you get your opponent, you hit him with that down throw to up tilt, you just feel chill. You just spam dash attack, and you feel like you are the coolest man alive. You just throw grenades all over the place, sometimes with a plan, sometimes not, and you feel like you're just the, the ultimate tactician. And that's what, it, that's what it feels like to play Snake, that's all it is. Everybody said in Smash 4 that Ike was the fundamental base character. If you want to learn your fundamentals, you play Ike. In this game, everyone calls Ike the Oonga Boonga monster because you spam Nair and you get victory royales. <laughs> that was disgusting. But, you know, that, that's kind of how it is. His Nair is amazing. It's been amazing since day one. All of his arrows are really good and he just kind of fits well in this game. Unfortunately, he is a little slow, but I mean, the best thing about him, just his aerials. They work uh, just so well and he's just such a solid kit. I wish he was a little better because I actually really like playing Ike, but he does what he needs to do and he does it well. You'd think I'd say, as a person that has played a lot of Pokemon Trainer, that the best thing about this character is that you can switch between three different characters to play who you need to play at the right time, the right matchups. But no, that's completely wrong, because as Pokemon Trainer, whenever you watch them, it's just like 90% of the match, you are playing one Pokemon, and then like 10% of the match, you switch to Charizard, try to get a kill, your opponent actually makes a comeback on you because he's so big, he takes so much damage, you throw the game, and it feels awful. <laughs> I just had to get that off my chest. But... The thing that feels great about Pokemon Trainer is that all three Pokemon have so much jank. And, you know, they seem like a very consistent character. No, no, don't let that, don't let them trick you. Pokemon Trainer wins by being jank. You have something like Squirtle, which just has all these jank, like, 0 to 80 combos. And can sometimes just jank you with neutral B, and sometimes can just, like, back your up, up B you off stage and kill you. And it's so dumb. And then you have something like Ivysaur. You got that down air. You used to have, like, down throw up B. You used to have, like, Nair up B. Those are patched out of the game, so Ivysaur can't, can't do as much jank, to be honest. Uh, and then you have Charizard, who has stuff like back air and flare blitz, which just steals stocks out of nowhere. This character, he just janks you out. He gets wins with that. That can be so fun. But it can be very frustrating when you throw as this character, which also happens a lot, as he is pretty hard to play. Diddy Kong's bananas and infinites, I think, are just so cool. And I think it's just such an interesting thing about the character. It allows him to just have a really relatively strong neutral. It allows him just to be a very interesting character. It allows him to have a decent amount of setups. Unfortunately, he isn't the best in this game, but I think it's pretty good. And as time goes on, people are figuring out more and more of this character. Again, though, probably the banana is the thing that I think is the best part about him. Honestly, Lucas disappoints me in this game because he was one of the last characters I played a ton of in Smash 4. He had a good defensive game, good projectiles, um, good tilts, good throw combos, good throw kills. Wasn't amazing at any of them, but was just overall a pretty strong character. In Ultimate, they make his combos just... Why? They just nerf a lot of them and just make them not really work. They make his projectiles quite a bit better to make him a lot better at spamming, and then they just make him just a lot more lame. I don't know how to explain this. This character has just become a ton more lame, and I am extremely disappointed. Um, and my day is ruined. Honestly, my day, is, my day is ruined. The best thing about him, though, is definitely going to be his projectiles now, and of course his Zare. These things can be ridiculous. They can just straight up beat certain characters that they really don't have much to do about him. Um, but, yeah, it, it kind of disappoints me when I see him. But those are the things that are great about him. 
Sonic Speed is, is so good. It feels so fun. Um, everybody hates fighting Sonic. I hate fighting Sonic. You hate fighting Sonic. Unless you have a really good matchup against Sonic, you won't enjoy your time playing against Sonic. But as the Sonic player, it feels so nice because you get to pick when you go in. You get to pick when you go out. You get to pick everything. You are in control of the match almost all the time in most matchups. It, it feels nice. It feels like you're the puppet master. And that's just enjoyable. King Dedede's got a respectable neutral, respectable damage, and he's just a respectable character. And then you look at all the disrespect this character has, and that's where I'm going with King Dedede. Just being able to throw out your Gordo, just chill out, just go for some of your taunts, lie on the ground just by holding down, and just throw a disrespect doing absolutely nothing. That is where King Dedede shines. Being able to just up B and SD while getting a kill with the falling part of your up B, spiking your opponent to their death. That is where King Dedede shines. As time has gone on, I think people's opinions of him have kind of gone all over the place, up and down, but the disrespect factor, it will always be there. Every Olimar player is trying to trick you. They're all saying that this character is garbage. Th that's, that's a straight up lie. This character is not bottom 10. This character is not bottom 20. This character is still really good. Sure, he can't walk up to your shield and up smash three times in a row safely, but why, why should a Zoner character be able to do that anyways. I don't know. I don't know what people want. Of course, they should fix his shield and all that. But the thing about Olimar that I think is just so great is that he's just a zoner character that can apply a lot of damage, a decent range, that can just take a ton of damage. But one that can also just sometimes get like 0 to 50s, 0 to 60s for no reason. You can just get like up smash, up air, up air, and then like a forward air. And your opponent's at like 60%. Why can a character like this do that? Sure, it doesn't always happen. But when it does, it's kind of dumb. Overall, I still think he's a good character. Everybody's throwing this guy under the bus. He doesn't deserve to be. He's still really good. That's just my thoughts right now. The best thing about Lucario is that you can be at your last stock at 120%, and your opponent is at their first stock at 30%, and it feels like you could still win that game. And sometimes, Lucario players still do win that game. Now, when your aura is just that stacked, you are in ultra instinct mode. There is nothing your opponent can do except for hit you with one random smash attack. But other than that, you, there's nothing they can do. They can't trade. They can't go for anything. Your aura sphere is gigantic. You have like a frame 6 or whatever, or I think it's frame 7, command grab with your side B. You do so much damage. You kill so early. You have so much going for you. Um, unfortunately, that only happens for like 1% of the game as the Kario, as most of the other time. You are getting beat up as he isn't the best. But when you're in Ultra Instinct, that's the funnest time like of any character in the entire game. So, Rob has really good projectiles and is overall a good zoning character, but as well, he's just a very good boxing character for some reason. He's stuff like forward air, he's stuff like down tilt, stuff like forward tilt and jab, that just makes it that he can actually do quite well close up. So I think that's the best part about him, just the fact that he's a zoner character that can also do well when your opponent gets up in your face. Now, if they get 100% up in your face and you have to like get out of shield or anything, yeah, he doesn't have any options for that. But in general, he just feels like he's pretty good close, pretty good far, and just feels fun, pretty consistent. That's kind of all I have to say about him. Okay, so Toon Link mains, you, you already know this, you're the type of players that throw a bomb, get a forward air, and you're like, I am so good. You say that to yourself every single time as Toon Link. I know it, I look at you, I turn my head and take a peep, and you're saying, I am so good. You're not so good, that's so free! That's so free! But, but you say it to yourself anyways. And I guess that's the best thing about Toon Link, a lot of you guys believe in your character. He has a lot of really cool stuff, a lot of cool setups, but... You know, I, I just can't do anything but shake my head when, when you guys do that to me. I'm gonna be honest, this like past month, I swapped from Pokemon Trainer to Wolf again. I, I swap mains like every month, so so don't worry about it. Um, Wolf is just good as he just feels good. He has a good projectile, he has really good tilts. It feels like you can kind of mash, but you can also play defensive and spacing if you want to. You can kind of go in. Um, he has a good enough recovery. His side B is spicy. His up B, and then you do it in neutral and do it to the ground sideways and hit your opponent anyways, and they don't see it coming. It's spicy. He just kind of has everything. And of course, you can spam smash attacks, and that feels really good. Um, he's just a character that the best thing about him, I guess, is that he's just good at everything, and he's really easy, and he just feels good, and it just feels like in every single matchup, there's at least something you can do. It never feels like you just pick the character and you lost and that there's nothing you can do and nothing you can learn there's always something with wolf and that just makes him feel like such a solid character and always fun to play morobito is fun because you can just throw out random stuff and sometimes it just works um i just like setting up camp with this character honestly and just kind of chilling i just kind of like wait in there and, and just not doing much that's kind of what he does um if your opponent just times you out sometimes it kind of sucks but just being able to chill, just being able to have a good time as this character, and just not try harding way too much, at least for me, that's my favorite part about him.
feels so cool when you're playing Mega Man correctly. It feels like you're keeping your opponent out at every single top. It makes so that you're mixing a, a, a mixture of close range and far range attacks so that you're getting some random setups that nobody sees coming. And it just feels very effective when you're playing Mega Man. It makes you feel like you're actually kind of playing the game Mega Man, which is one of my favorite games as a kid. I don't know. It just feels cool. And th that's where I'm going to end right here. We Fit Trainer is my secret pick. When I really want to win, I'm pulling out Wii Fit because that is my Nindo. That is my ninja way. <laughs> this character though, honestly, I love playing. Um, camping out with her, of course, is one of the best things about her, ledge camping and all that. But her down B is honestly my favorite move in the entire game, easily. Because it just makes you go on steroids. It makes it that you can go in and get kills at ridiculous percents. Your backers can on like 70% on some light characters and do the ledge. It's making so that you can get stuff like falling air into up tilt, into up tilt, into like an up air, and there you go. There's a free 80%. Just kidding. Not, not quite that much, but pretty close. If you can go ham against a player that doesn't know what to do, or if you can play against a big body and get like four nairs in a row, oh, it feels so good. This character can feel so good. Killing someone with a back hit of your forward air, it feels so good. Most of the time, you don't get much with this character. Most of the time, it's just kind of lame. But when you get some spice going on with Wii Fit, and when you get that down B going on, this character feels so good. Honestly, I haven't played that much Rosalina and Luma in this game or in the last game, but whenever I do play them, what makes me feel good about this character is just being able to use Luma and just feel like I'm controlling both myself and something else at the same time. And there's just something so oddly satisfying about that. It's not even like Luma's that great anymore, and it's like Luma dies a lot, but just being able to protect your friend being able to fight together, and being able to achieve your goals, that is what feels good about this character. TLDR, you're an anime protagonist. None of you knew that, but that's the case. Little Mac gives me the same wooju energy as somebody like Kirby, where if I pull in out Little Mac and I beat you in tournament round one, I know that you feel awful. I just instantaneously know. You're, you're thinking to yourself, how did I lose to this man's crusty Little Mac? This man has never pulled out Little Mac in the last 20 times we've played. Why did he pull him out? But then you lost anyways. And that's where the Little Max power comes in. Just losing to a character that you know is bad, that just has so much random crap, it's just so fun to be the player that's winning in that situation. Um, his super armor is ridiculous, his forward tilt and some other tilts are ridiculous. Sure, he is way worse than in the last game and way less fun to play than in Smash 4, but when you win as him, it just feels good. Speaking of feeling good, you know, when I was talking about Toon Link and players that are like, oh, I feel so good, I'm so good. Greninja is the character that I look at you, and every single time you do anything, you're like, I am so good at this game, guys. I am so good. I got a drag down up air into down tilt and up smash. I am so good. I got something like a neutral air into a dash attack into forward air. Holy crap. Did you guys see that? Did you see that? I am so good. I I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make fun of you guys, but you know that happens. And whenever you watch these players, that that's what they're thinking. That's what I'm thinking when I'm playing him. Maybe that, maybe I'm just assuming, maybe that's just how it is, but Greninja players with all your setups and all the cool stuff you can do, we're, we're catching on to you. And that's probably the best thing about him. Easily the best thing about the Mi Fighters is being able to make a Goku Mi, spend 5 minutes doing it, and then being able to um, reverse 3-0, your friend, like one of your best friends. Um, yeah, that's, that's as simple as that. Happened in tournament with me, um, and it was great, so <laughs> thank you for that. Winning against players that are better than you is probably the best part about Palutena because I can say from experience that sometimes I'll play against people that I know are a little better than me that just are putting in more time in the game because I'm not really playing it way too much anymore. I'm mainly just talking about it and just kind of watching it. And then, you know, I lose game one to somebody, I swap to Palutena, I turn off my brain a little bit, and then the wins just start flowing in. The winds of winning just start flowing in and it just feels nice. Um, not, not everybody can play Palutena, not everybody gets those W's out of her. And you still do have to know a lot about the character to play her effectively, but just the calming winds of W's going towards you when you pick her up, and just knowing that she has so much stupid crap that's so easy to pull off, it just feels nice. Playing Pac-Man and feeling like you have the galaxy brain 24-7 is, is the best part about him. Being able to switch from camping to going ham like T-Can is really, really cool. And just getting like Galaga combos into like your down B and then you get like forward air and you're getting all this percent out of nowhere and you finally get a kill somehow with a read. It just feels so cool. You feel galaxy brain. And even though most of the time Pac-Man players are actually zero IQ and just spam down B and then charge the neutral B and that's it five billion times in a game. It feels like you're good when you're playing him so that's all you really need. I love how powerful Robin feels and how all the setups that Robin can do just feel so good. Now, Robin is a slow character that oftentimes can't reply as much pressure as he needs to, um, but 
just the Levin Sword. It feels so chunky. It feels so nice every time you hit it. The combos feel so good. And of course, hitting your side B and then going off of that, of course hitting something like a Thoron or a second level neutral B, there's just so much this character that just feels like it works. It feels like a Fire Emblem character that's actually from Fire Emblem and just feels effective and just feels enjoyable to play. It just feels like a full, unique kit. And I think that's the best part about him. Honestly, one of the best design characters. I wish they'd fix a few problems about him, but just it feels awesome. The best thing about Shulk is that you get to cheat mid-game. You get to pull out that Game Shark of Neutral B. You get to, you get to pick whatever you want, pick your freaking Skittles, and then from there, <laughs> your opponent just has to wait. You, you can get extra damage, you can get extra speed, you can get extra jump height, you can get out of your combos. We all know what Shulk can do. We all know what you guys do. We all see you. Um, we all know that you're cheating us out every single game. And yeah, that, that's the coolest thing about him. Uh, his far range is also really fun to play with, but Neutral B, it's just such a cool mechanic. I wish we had a character that was like him. I wish that Byleth had like a Neutral B that you could change your weapon, and that would be so cool. Or someone like Rex that could change between different weapons, that would be so cool. I, I want another thing like Shulks. But for now, he's got the only thing that's really cool. It's kind of like a weapon stance change, and I really like those, so I think it's really awesome. Bowser Jr. Um, this one's kind of hard, because... He's, he's kind of okay as a character goes, you know, his forward or back are pretty good. I use stuff like up throw into up air, up air, up air, that's really good. And he's just kind of, kind of there. Um, I guess my favorite thing about him is going to be a side B. At very low levels, you can just kind of spam that, and with the super armor, people don't know what to do about it at all. As you get into a higher level though, it doesn't really work. That's just kind of how I feel like in general with this character. If you're playing against people that don't know what they're doing, Bowser Jr. can feel like a god. If they do know what they're doing, yeah, it's not going to be quite as fun. On to another projectile character that makes you feel so smart. We got Duck Hunt Dog. Now, Duck Hunt Dog players will think to themselves that they are so good. That they are so smart because they're chucking out these projectiles. They're getting that pressure going on. And look at all these things that I'm doing at the same time. While in reality, they are just pressing the B button and just throwing out all of their load. They're just crapping out stuff all the time. Um... But, when you are the player, it feels really cool, it feels really fun, and it feels just great to apply all that pressure and all that. Um, against Duck Hunt, not the funnest, but, you know, when you're playing him, you can feel so good, and you can feel so smart, and that's good enough. Ryu and Ken are easily some of my favorite characters in the entire game. Um, I always give up playing them for one reason or another, eventually I just get bored of them, or I just think that, you know, these characters aren't good enough, or they lose against projectiles, or they're just really annoying to play against swords, which, all of those are definitely the case. But both of them just feel so crisp. They just feel like characters that if you put in the time, you will get results out of them. You will be able to just body players, as long as they aren't, you know, certain archetypes. And it just feels like you can just get kills out of nowhere. You can get damage out of nowhere. It just feels like they feel so strong. And especially after the buffs, <laughs> before the buffs they felt awful. But especially after the buffs, you can get just so many combos, so many strings, so many setups. They feel awesome. And honestly, even just talking about them right now, <laughs> I kind of wish I was made of them as we speak. Talking about Cloud is kind of a touchy subject for me, because honestly, I got hard carry with Cloud in the last game. Um, I didn't put in way too much time in the last game, I didn't really practice way too much, I just kind of went to tournaments, had a lot of fun, and tried to win. And I would beat people that were so much better than me, because my character was so much better than theirs. Smash 4 was so much worse balanced compared to this game, and I loved it, because I'm just, I'm just the worst type of person. I'm the worst type of person, and all Cloud mains in the last game were the worst type of person. He was almost as good as Bayonetta, with like no Ill required, and now he's a character that's still pretty good, but just doesn't feel quite as good. Um, that's my rant about Cloud. I guess the best thing about him is that his up yet shield is dumb. Um, also, of course, Limit is just such a cool mechanic. It's so fun still. It, I wish it killed earlier. I wish it was a little better. I wish you could utilize it a little bit more. But it's just one of the coolest mechanics in the entire game. Could use some buffs, but yeah, that's probably the best thing about him and the coolest thing about him. Okay, Corrin. Corrin's a hard one because I actually really like Corrin as well in the last game. I like a lot of sword characters or characters that can just kind of jump and mash buns in your face. That's kind of my two archetypes. And Corrin just felt solid in the last game. I don't know what else to say about that. I thought Corrin was a sword character that wasn't quite as boring as the other ones. Um, now, you could argue with me on that. A lot of people will. But I feel like the side B was really cool, the neutral B was really cool, the counter being so strong was really, really impressive. Um, in this game though, they just kind of toned down everything about Corrin. And now, while Corrin's aerials are actually some of the best in the game, I feel like everybody underrates them, they are so good. Um, she just doesn't really have the speed to utilize them, and she just doesn't really have anything else to go with them. With that said, they are godlike. And with that said, you have stuff like, you know, reverse hit um, neutral air into the back air or into up air. You have stuff like falling neutral air into up air into forward air. Um, you have a lot of stuff you can actually do with your aerials. And it's just a very good, consistent character still. Just not quite good enough, which is really disappointing for me. Okay, Bayonetta mains, y'all complain more than anyone else. And 
it is acceptable because this character has has just no kill power um, and because this character is actually really hard to win with. Um, with that said, the thing that is great about playing Bayonetta is that you get like free 0 to 50 still. Now sure you may not be able to kill your opponent until really really late into the game, but you get so much free damage still and it just feels really good. And I love being able to do this Bayonetta. Or I guess I'd say I'd love if I could be able to do that because I never put any time into her. I honestly can't do it myself. But being able to watch that is pretty cool. And now being able to actually somewhat root for the character, even though most people still hate her, um, it's kind of nice. Okay, so if I'm going to be honest, the best thing about Inkling is A, of course, being able to stack all of, a lot of your damage with your ink and being able to get all that. That's a really cool mechanic. Um, and having to be able to recharge that, that's pretty cool. B, of course, they're just so safe. But I feel like the main thing about them is just that... Being able to run under so many attacks and being able to just dash dance so well and just utilize that, I think that's honestly probably the best thing about them. I think if they gave anyone else that dash dance, anyone else that speed, they'd be a lot better character. And while, you know, Inkling has a lot of cool mechanics, I think that's probably the best one about him, <laughs> as funnily enough as that sounds. The best thing about Ridley is the fact that he's actually bigger than Samus and actually easier to combo than Samus and actually lighter than Samus as well. Good job, Sakurai. What what an amazing idea. Make like a super heavyweight sized character and not make them super heavyweight. Oh. <laughs> I feel bad for Ridley Mains. Um, on the other end of the spec, Ridley's actually a really cool character. I feel like Ridley is a little underrated. Um, just has a lot of stuff. I, I don't know how to exactly explain it. It's just quite consistent, does a good amount of damage, connects yards pretty well. Can just kind of play his game decently well enough. Um, he does get combo to infinity and does die to infinity and has, has a lot of weaknesses, if we're going to be honest here. But, you know, he's alright. It feels fun to play him and it feels really cool to play him. I guess the, the best part, you just feel kind of cool. You feel awesome. You feel like a kaiju monster. And we've been waiting for that for a long time, so there's that. The best thing about Simon and Richter is just that you can tilt your opponent super easily. Because, as with a lot of projectile characters, um, there's just tilt potential by just checking projectiles for like 8 minutes straight and timing your opponent out. But as well, Simon and Richter just don't have like any possible moves to go in with. Um, when you look at all, a lot of other projectile characters, even like Duck Hunt with his neutral air forward air, and even someone like Pac-Man, there are some options for them to hold forward and to go in sometimes. Richter, you can't really do that ever. Um, even with like your forward air and back air, you usually want to space them. Your grab's really bad, so you can't really go in and go for that. And you just kind of wait. And that's probably the best thing about him. Your opponent knows what your plan is, and it's just going to tilt them for frame one. And while some people can beat that plan, some people can't. The tilt power of this character is very strong, though. King K. Rules got swag, and I will just say this 1,000%. One, 1, this is just a fact. There's nothing else to say about this character. You can armor through certain attacks. You can just get stupid strings that shouldn't work at all because your opponent is being dumb, and they're like, I can just outframe data King K. Rule, and they can't sometimes. And mainly, you have down air, and you have back air. Back air, I think, is the swaggiest move in the entire game. It has so much lag, for no reason. It, it's it's so powerful. And if you miss it a lot off stage, you are killing yourself for that. Especially if you fast follow. But it's worth it, because you got that swag back air. You got that kill with King K. Rule. And he's got the swag walk as well. Yeah, that, that's what I'm going to say with him. I feel like Isabel, Isabel triggers me, because... Why is Ken an Echo Fighter when Isabel isn't? Sure, Isabel has a lot of different moves, but Ken also has a lot of different moves. That's just the first thing I think whenever I think of this character. Um, now, the best thing about her is that she's cute. I think that is the main reason a lot of people pick up this character. In most cases, she just feels kind of like a worse villager that has less potential to set up for camping. That side B doesn't really work that well. That's down B, if your opponent doesn't want to go in, does nothing. But, yeah, she's really cute. Can be kind of cool to play, and can be kind of frustrating to play against, I guess. We're off to the nice character, that being Incineroar. And the best thing about Incineroar is that if your opponent is holding in, um, you can just press neutral B and you can do a lot of their options. And as well, you can press down B, get supercharged, and just kill your opponent at ridiculous percents. Now, if your opponent decides to play lame and decides to just edge guard you and not go in way too much without you going in first and just, you know, movement camp you, yeah, then, then it's not so fun. But a lot of people won't do that until you get to higher levels, so at least for a while, he's extremely fun in that way. He feels pretty pretty dang brain dead, and it's just kind of fun to play him like that until people get really good. Piranha Plant is just kind of the type of character that, I don't know, it just feels bad to play against him. It, is there anything else to say about Piranha Plant? Um, you try to jump in, you got a Patui, 
you're at the ledge, the ledge trapping is just insane. But the neutral in general just isn't that good, and it just feels like you don't know what they're going to do. You just feel like the Piranha Plant doesn't really have that much options, but somehow they win anyway sometimes. And I guess that's that's Piranha Plant's power. That's the Plant Gang's power. And the funniest thing about Piranha Plant is that everybody said they'd be part of Plant Gang, and everybody quit Piranha Plant in a week. I'm going to hold that against everyone's heads. Yeah. <laughs> With Joker, the best thing is 100% obviously Arsene, there's nothing else to say about that. But the second best thing about Joker, because that's just so obvious, I don't want to talk about that, is the fact that you feel so cool when playing Joker, and you feel so calculated, and you feel so smart, and you feel so good. And for a top tier, I really like that. I feel like in a lot of senses, it feels like you're playing somebody like, you know, Melee Fox, which is really cool. A lot of the stuff he has is pretty good, and not way too hard, but then again, a lot of his stuff, like his certain, you know, drag down combos, a lot of his, you know, throw combos you could potentially get, a lot of his spacing, a lot of that isn't that easy, and most people can't pull him out. He's not a top tier you can just pull out and win with, like Palutena, which, when you finally actually do pull him out and do do really well with him, because you know he's amazing, it just makes you feel so good, it makes you feel so sly, and he just feels so great. I wish that they would have done this, where they just made so that Arsene was just kind of like a part of his moveset, where, you know, stuff like his back maybe killed a little earlier in general, but didn't actually have like an Arsene meter. I don't know. Um, without Arsene, I think people wouldn't complain as much, and I think he could honestly be one of the healthiest characters in the entire game. With Arsene, that's obviously not the case, but either way, you feel cool with him, and that's just how it is. The best thing about Hero is just, you know, going for aerials, playing that slow game, your opponent is just kind of getting used to the flow of the game, and then you press down B out of nowhere. And then, L, your opponent is dead. They've been hit by a thwack at 20%. I'm sorry, sir. See you in the next life. This could also happen with something like Psych Up. This could happen with a crit. This could happen with a ton of random things. Now, will this always happen? No. No, this definitely won't. Will you get bodied for the majority of the game? Because the rest of Hero's kit is kind of kind of thwack. Yes. Yes, it, that is the case. But just feeling, feeling that taste. Oh, that taste of just free kills out of nowhere for some reason sometimes. It feels great. I've pulled out Hero more times than I'd wish to admit in tournament when I just don't want to play anybody else. And sometimes he can just give you that W when nobody else can. I feel like the best part about playing Banjo and Kazooie is the fact that you're playing a character that you've always wanted to play. And I feel like while in a lot of senses their actual moveset is a little disappointing, they're a little weaker than we wished, they're a little more spammy, quite a bit more spammy than people hope for, and kind of lame, honestly, um, when we hope that they'd be really hype. It's just you're playing a character that you've always wanted to play. And while most people kind of gravitated against Banjo pretty quickly, the ones that stayed and the ones that kept playing the person that they really wanted to go into, I think that's really admirable. And I think that's honestly the coolest thing about him. Terry against three fourths of the cast is just the funnest character in the game. And I will say that hands down. He can just go in, he can just do so much, he can apply so much pressure. Um, you can just, you know, let's trap your opponent for days. You can get the go meter and just. Jab, jab, bust a wolf. They are dead. You could just jab, jab, power dunk. It, it all feels so nice. He just feels so nice. And then you play against projectile characters or you play against a sword character and there's just no way to approach. And it's just so not fun at that point. And that's honestly what made me want to stop playing Terry because in my region at least we have a ton of those characters and it's just, it's just so sad because in every other matchup he feels so cool, he feels so fun. He's easily one of the coolest characters in the entire game, hands down, nothing you can say against that. But watching him in certain matchups, it, it can just be hard. So I guess we'll finish it off with the final DLC character. This character isn't out yet, but we got Byleth. Now the best part about Byleth is that they could have picked a more boring sword character. I think that is just kind of what they could have done. Um, they could have made so Byleth only had the sword, and that could have been what we had. Now, could they have picked a better character from Three Houses? 100%. Um, could they have made so like the kit utilizes all three of the main characters, um, instead of just Byleth, who is obviously, in my opinion, the most boring character in the entire game. I hate Byleth in that game. Yes. Could they have made so that this was a stance change character, so that you could swap between three different items, like your sword, and then a lance, and then a bow, or sword, lance, and axe? And that would have been the coolest character in the entire game, in my opinion. Definitely. Did they do that? No. Um, and she just kind of ends up being there. I guess we'll have to see when the character actually comes out. Overall, looks okay. Those are kind of my thoughts. Just kind of looks okay. Um, seems fine enough. Has, has cool enough moves. But I feel like they just could have done a lot more. And it feels like they just didn't really want to bother because they knew that the reception wouldn't be great anyways. So yeah, that's my thought about this character. Could have been a lot worse, but also could have been a lot better. But... You know, I guess the best thing is that we didn't get something that was awful. <laughs> so with that in mind, that is in my opinion the best thing about every single character in Smash Ultimate. Now sorry this video has been super long, 
I could have split this up into multiples like I have in the past, but I thought to myself, you know what, I don't want to have to hold myself to that. Sometimes you just want to watch a like 40 minute long video about a man rambling about random crap in a video game. And if you made it to this far, say Shabba Dabba Scooby Doo in the comment section. <laughs> because you deserve it, and I will try to comment down below. Thank you all for watching though, I hope you guys enjoyed. This is of course my own opinion, and if you have your own character, mainly your main, talk about what you think is the best part about them, and what you like about your character. With that all said, guys, thank you all for watching, hope you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe to see more, and tell me if you'd like to see any other videos like this in the future, I thought this was a ton of fun to make, I don't know if it's going to be received well, or if it's eat awfully, but, you know, it was worth my time, so there you go with that. As always guys, thank you all for watching, and have a smashing day.